Catholic churches fight to maintain loophole in child sex abuse reporting. Who is surprised? Absolutely no one. Okay. The Associative Press investigative team recently released their findings after examining more than 130 bills to amend child sex abuse reporting laws in the United States. The AP investigation concluded that, quote, none of them succeeded in closing the clergy loophole. The loophole is the clergy penitent privilege, which exempts clergy and priests in all religious denominations from reporting child sex abuse heard in a confessional setting. In 2020, the Catholic Diocese of Salt Lake City heavily opposed House Bill 90 or HB 90 in Utah. The church gathered 90,000 signed letters from its parishioners and sent them to Representative Angela Romero, the bill's author. Romero, a Democrat and a lifelong Catholic, has been working on HB 90 as part of her campaign against the sexual abuse of children. The bill was eventually axed in March of 2020. The Catholic Church in Utah used its well-funded lobbying infrastructure and coordinated with the Mormon Church and the Jehovah's Witnesses to further bolster their defense against bills like HB 90. In August of 2022, the Associated Press reported that a Muslim, excuse me, that a Mormon bishop in Arizona had allowed the RAPE and abuse of MJ, a five-year-old girl, by her father. The father continued to sexually abuse the victim for as many as seven more years into her adolescence. Senator Victoria Steele, a Democrat from Tucson, Arizona, said that the church's power over the legislature makes it difficult to share stories like that of MJ. That particular case is so bad because the, the bishop who was told by the father what was he was doing to his children was specifically advised by a helpline like the mormon church had a helpline for cases like this the bishop called the helpline to be like how should i handle this situation and the helpline specifically told him do not tell police do not tell civil authorities do what? not do not tell child protective services we're going to handle this internally and that father continued to do this to his children for seven more years so well, like, this is just like one example yeah. of how many of these institutions are essentially culpable in a lot of these crimes against minors and all of these different um, measures and bills across different states across the United States get continuously and systematically shut down by extremely powerful religious organizations like the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, and the Jehovah's Witnesses. But okay, what the hell? How is this not illegal? Like, shouldn't the helpline person behind also go to jail? Should that not be illegal? Here's the thing: it it is specifically not illegal, and they're trying to make it illegal, and this is what keeps on getting shut down. So it varies a little bit by state by state. So in, I believe every state in the country. You know, there are rules about man, man, mandated reporting. A teacher is a mandated reporter. A principal, a, a doctor, a, um, a therapist, a psychiatrist, they are mandated reporters, which means that if we find that abuse of minors is happening through what our patient tells us, our client, what we see with a, a student, um, we are mandated to report this to child protective services okay in some states there is no mandated reporting for members of the clergy from any religious denomination right so in some states there they do not have any mandated reporting requirement or burden right in other states what happens is that there is mandated reporting for clergy except in the setting of uh, 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 in the scenario of the confessional setting. So they are mandated to report, but if they hear about abuse in the context of an abuser confessing it in a confessional setting, that is specifically exempted from being illegal. And that's what people are fighting to close. And basically it is systematically in coordinated ways shut Why down is this? sometimes before the bills even get introduced 
who's motivated like why like why are the like who's supporting maintaining this kind of status quo is it republicans so, is it cons- not like, always why would it well okay but what is the motivation like we are like in a this is a country that i think most people agree that this is nonsense so what no. is how is this okay who's so not here's, agreeing with here's this? the justification from the other side they say that this is a violation of their religious freedom okay we we could take five days to unpack that because this is especially for a catholic if if people don't know about catholicism there are several sacraments within the catholic faith and confession is one one of these sacraments and confession is is a prerequisite to receiving the eucharist oh go ahead one second do they not understand how this sounds like they're yeah it sounds like they're they want to be free really they're making their religious freedom because they already made religious freedom to be synonymous with the freedom to oppress freedom to um take other people's freedom away now this sounds like what there's what translates to other people is that religious freedom means the freedom to molest children. They are they are making people are understanding. Mm-hmm. I know I know that's I know that's not what it, what they're saying, but this is what we will hear. Our the it will be translated to us like oh really they're within the context of saying like oh this is our religious freedom and you're like we are the side of like we want to protect children and like our religious freedom. This would translate to an average individual as like, oh, religious freedom means the freedom for us to continue molesting children. That's how it translates to. Also, yeah, yeah. In, in the way, in terms of how it reads to the public, like I completely see what you mean. That's technically not exactly what's happening because it's not, not what I'm saying, saying though. No, I know, I know, I know. But I want to clarify yeah. for other people, right? I understand you, but I want to clarify. What's technically happening is they, it's not like, oh, this is what people in our clergy are necessarily doing, although it definitely is. Um, It's about saying, okay, if as a priest, for example, someone comes to me in a confessional booth and says that they have done this to a child, I, in any, in any other profession, you would be legally required to report that to authorities, any other profession. But this profession is legally privileged on the basis of religion, specifically because in the Catholic faith, it is a holy sacrament, a very important one. But why is the law recognizing the holiness of that? They also argue that changing this exemption, this privilege, changing this eliminating this privilege has isn't proven they would actually help increase reporting they they say their logic they literally say armin they literally say that in fact keeping this privilege helps prevent the abuse because if the abuser has somewhere where they can go and confess this with assured secrecy this is one step closer to ending the cycle so to speak it's not up for them to decide we have a society where laws will be determined based on what works the best we don't need men in robes using ancient texts that were meant for goat herders 2000 years ago as a guide to life to tell us what is the best way to reduce molestation of children. They have shown to us repeatedly that whatever they think works best doesn't work. We have the highest levels of child molestations within their environment. So they are not the authority to go to, to figure out how to avoid stuff like this. Even if they're right, even if they're right, we will use that information based on a scientific method to determine what works, to come up with laws that would implement that information, the data 
to reduce the harm. It shouldn't be up to you guys. Okay? The only justification that could exist for you having different standard than any, literally anywhere else is for is the recognition of the law and the state of your holiness, which in an apparently secular country shouldn't be happening. Also, one more thing. Fuck any conservatives that keep saying that these liberals are grooming children. You motherfuckers are actually asking for legal protection to groom children. Anyways, go on. Oof, you oof. <laughs> oof. <laughs> um, D is saying, they keep saying, we'll handle this from within. And this is something that is consistently seen across organizations, especially ones like the Catholic Church, Mormon Church, and the Jehovah's Witnesses that all have a supposed claim on being like God's one holy chosen organization, right? They have a vested interest, a conflict of interest in protecting their own image of piety, of purity, over actually protecting the interests of the vulnerable within their community. One of the most egregious examples of this was in Idaho. There was a police officer a police officer, a Mormon police officer that turned himself in for doing bad things to multiple children. He had told 15 people within his Mormon church what he did. Nothing happened until he turned himself in. Wow. wow. Because there is no so of, like, what do I have to do to get mandate. arrested here? Yeah. It's absurd. And so I think reading this report by the Associated Press made me so angry because there's so many different ways in which this is operated like a freaking mafia. And they team up with each other. These institutions team up with each other to shoot down these bills, right? And this affects children even, I mean, the one, it's, it, it, this matters because it affects children, period, right? But then it also affects children within these religious communities. But it also affects all children within the broader community because a lot a lot of time these predators don't just go after people within their religious institution. They also impact the greater community, as we've seen in instances with the Jehovah's Witnesses, where they would start off with kids within their community because they know the institution will protect them. And then it expands outward to other just children within the neighborhood because they think that they can get away with it based on their previous experience. And... What's particularly egregious is I don't even know how to, and this, it, it seems like a freaking crime racket. In Utah, part of the problem is that there are so many Mormon lawmakers. And so the Mormon lawmakers, their representatives in the state Senate, you know, in the state house and house representatives, that it's also self-interest for them because of how they are seen within their community or threats of excommunication if they go after things too hard. One of the worst examples of this was in Maryland, there was um, this one bishop, I forget, I think his name was like Mc, Mc, McCarrick or McPatrick or something. He led the charge against shooting down one of these bills that would help close these loopholes and make mandatory reporting like really solid. He was later defrocked by the Catholic Church for committing these crimes himself. The bill still can't go through. Wow. This it's is insane. Obscene. And so I think I'm trying to think about like what people who are outraged by this kind of thing can do. Basically, we need to be able to keep a closer watch on when things like this are going on in our community. When are there bills that are being proposed that could handle these problems? Because what the church does is it organizes its community tightly. There was one church where they had pre-typed out letters for their congregation. And they right, would, when people, the, ah, the, Sorgu the, is asking, what does defrocked mean? Defrocked means, the frock is, you know, the robes of the priest. They've they've stripped him of being a, a, a priest. They've disrobed him, so to speak. It, he got kicked out. Um, they would pre-sign. They would pre-print these letters, 
tell their clergy that their inherent their most godly sacrament is being attacked that one of the inherent qualities of being a catholic is being attacked and then have them sign these letters as they leave the church with pre-stamped envelopes so they're organized they organize their community tightly this influences politicians so and their lobbying is on a whole different level. So basically, if there's bills coming forward in your state, in your community that help address these problems, we need the community to counter the, the power of these institutions by getting as organized ourselves. It's like the only shot. Because the politicians need to see how much stronger the desire and will for closing these loopholes is over the outrage over those that want to maintain religious privilege. Yeah, this uh, is why Dia we need to get organized. Yeah. Dia saying this shows how much religion is involved in U.S. politics. It's gross. Yeah, it's Disgusting. abhorrent. Yeah. Anyways, we do need to move on. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was like a really important thing to cover, though, because it's just like. How much can you continue to show your true face and your priorities, and yet you are still so powerful? Right. It's absurd. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.